Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. What's up? Welcome to the No Mogul Podcast, a show about all things breakdancing. And my name is Rick Beta, and you can follow along on social media at Rick Beta. That's R I C K B A T A. Or email the show always 24 7, no manga podcast at gmail.com. So I'm back. How do we? I'm asking, legit asking, like, how how do we do this thing again? Wait, is this thing on? Hello? It's been a while. Kind of had a couple, I guess, an unplanned few weeks off. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Life just gets in the way. However, though, when it impacts, like, my close circle, like AKA the family that takes priority priority. Number one, it's all about the family family first. So I'm not joking. When I say this, I'm, I, this, this show is part of my therapy. I need this. Well, preferably weekly, but I'll take what I can, what I can get. It keeps me sane. I just know I'm, I'm simply being tested by the universe and that's a 100% fact. I'm just being tested right now. It's all good. I'm handling myself pretty well, I might add. You know, got to get my, here, pat myself on the back. You know, give me a round of applause. Yeah, applause for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go team, go. I'm being tested. But that's all I want to say at this point, though. And, and I'll be fine. And most importantly, my family members impacted will be fine as well. That's what it's all about. Whew. So anyway, speaking of being tested, challenged, just pushed to the point of just your, your threshold. The, and this is even crazy too. The Olympics, they've already come and gone since I was last on the mic. How crazy is that? What? I got to chat it up with my man Cabbage. Again, he was back on the show. Solid, solid. Did I mention solid? He's a solid dude. So go listen to that episode if you haven't yet. We went deep, too. Deep, Cabbage, right? And that was in a direction I didn't expect to as well. It's just, it, you know, just these things unfold. You just ride the wave. But that was fun, Cabbage. But yeah, Cabbage, the Olympics, man. We got a lot to chat about. Or I got a lot to chat about. Vice versa, whatever. But, you know, we did chat about, you know, the schedule for skateboarding in addition to, you know, breakdancing's debut. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a bit. But... I just have to say right off the bat, I mean, much like every single week trying to keep up with all these damn videos, all the news, all the drama, I get overwhelmed at times. You know, I just can't keep up at that level I'd like to. You know, if I was doing this full time, no biggie. No biggie. I'd be on top of every damn thing. You'd be like, damn, Rick, how do you know all this stuff? Because it's my job, 24-7. It would be amazing. But that's not the case. You know, I have very... I'm holding my fingers a very limited amount of time this week, limited bandwidth every week. You know, summer's over. I'm back to work. My kids are back in school. My son's soccer practice started back up again. And damn, there's so many Olympics uh, events that I missed. So many. You know, my wife and I were talking about, we're like, wait, did, wasn't last, didn't last Olympics, we, we got to check out a little bit more than we did, right? I don't think I even watched maybe 15% of all the games, maybe 20 even that's probably a generous number. You know, I had, of course, check out you know, as much street sk uh, skateboarding as possible. So I didn't get to watch all of the women's street or parks events. But actually, no, let me rephrase that. All of the prelims. And, you know, of course, I know one at this point. It's, it was, you know, you know, basically the winners the day of. So there's no such thing as spoilers because if you follow like 90% of skateboarding media, you're going to find out anyway. So congrats to all the winners. But you want to know who has a very, very bright future in skateboarding? Yeah, exactly. Arissa True. Arissa Slade. Arissa ate. No crumbs left. And she, you know, be she became the youngest Australian to win a gold medal. There we go, Arissa. Have a feeling we're going to be saying her name again in four years. That's what's up. But I was able to see a few of the runs, and I was kind of bummed to see Chloe Cavell. She struggled. Just, just It wasn't her time. Four years from now, it might be a different story. She'll be fine. But the competition was fierce, and especially at the Olympics levels, you, uh, level. You need to bring your A game. There's no room for error. 
So she kind of took it hard, but I, I think she'll be fine. And the same thing for the men's events, you know, and I did I wasn't able to check out all of it, but I did watch the the, the finals. So the men's street and the park finals. And I, did I? Yeah, I didn't watch all the prelims for the park. See, I missed a lot of it, but it was exciting. But I didn't watch it live. That, okay, that's what I had to mention. I didn't watch it live. I only went back and watched the replay of the street event after hearing how close and some may say controversial it was. Only because freaking Yuto did it again. Are you kidding me, Yuto? And don't come to me saying he didn't deserve it. It came down to him and Jagger and his flip phone. And actually, they kind of did, they did very similar tricks, not the same. You know, Jagger, he did his on a hubba. Yuto did his on the round rail. But Jagger's, his attempt was a bit sketchy, a little wobbly. He was very shocked to have landed that too. Just a look on his face like, what? Everyone's like, what? That earned him a 95.25. You know, bumped him up to first place. At the moment, temporarily, of course. But Yuto, on his last damn attempt, doing what he always does, just stoic, calm, Nolly 270 blunt side. I mean, smooth sailing, spinning, grinding, landing bolts. That got him a 97.08. And not bad. He had three zeros, three zero point zeros before that attempt. It wasn't looking good. But that's the thing about Yuto. Talk about pressure. He was calm, cool, boom. I think he was the second to last rider, I believe. I didn't write that down, but he wasn't the last, last rider. So it wasn't the last attempt of the, the contest, or at least what I might recall. Oh, man, it's been so long. I don't know. But it, I had to point out, not a worry in the world. Locked in like a pro like he is. He's like, give me my gold medal, damn it. Give me it. But think about it. They had to give Yuto a better score. He landed it, the, that trick cleaner. But it was that close. They were they were that close. And Nija, uh, he was right up there as well, except he was so fixated. Just he couldn't get out of his own way. He wanted to land that switch heel crook. He, he's like, I, this is the trick that I am going to put my body on the grenade for right now. And that one was never meant to be. Three attempts. Three attempts didn't happen. So, yeah, that event, the, the it was very close. Here are the final numbers. As I said, there was no room for an error in the, in the women's event, no room for an error for error in the men's event. So, it was, I mean, think about it. Nyjah was very, very lucky to get the podium. Yuto, he ended, of course, gold with 28, no, 281.14 points. 281.4. Let me read that correctly on my notes here. Jagger Eaton, silver, 281.04 points. <laughs> you think the judges were sweating a little bit on those last numbers? You think they, I mean, I'm not saying that it's rigged, but they're like, hmm, gosh, Jagger got this and then this. And, mm, look at the difference. <laughs> what? 0. 0.10 of a difference between first and second. Jagger was that close. But Japan took it. Yuto took it. And Nyjah, you know, he didn't fall too far behind. He was at 279.38. That was his final point count. Damn close. Damn close. And now whereas the women's, the, the differential on the street, it was there was a little bit more of a gap. So Koko Yoshizawa. Yeah, Yoshizawa. I hope I said that right. She got first from Japan. 272.75. Oh, by the way, she's only 14 years old. I had to write down her age. I'm like, damn, only 14. Liz Akama, silver, Japan, 15 years old, 265.95 points. And then Reisa Haisa, I'm sorry, Leo, that got the bronze from Brazil. She was 16, so 253.37. Crazy. I mean, it was still a little bit more of a gap. Still entertaining as hell. That was good. You know, that gap from third to fourth was was pretty, it was, it was about 11 points. So men's was like down to the wire, though. That was so fun. And back to, of course, Mr. Horagome. The repeat is complete. Repeat winner. Repeat gold winner. Now, who's going to take him down in 2028? That's the real question. Who's going to take him down? He's got the momentum for a three-peat. Easy. 
and he's four years younger than Nija. I mean, that's if I think about it. if Nija completes um, competes, he's going to be thirty three. So yeah, Uto will be twenty nine. Jagger will be twenty eight. So Jagger is still a threat. He knows he's going to be back up there. He he was he had a sniff. He was so close to getting that gold. Jagger might do it. Jagger might if he can take down Uto. I mean, he's probably the only one that could take down Uto. The next Olympics is going to be fire. And you know, much like all these older guys here, there's eventually going to be some sort of passing of the the baton, so to speak. So maybe some young bucks are going to be coming up in the next four years. I don't know. We'll see. And for the park event, Australia's very own Keegan Palmer, he too got the repeat. C congrats to both you guys. Anytime you're repeating in get, repeating gold in the Olympics, that just you got to have ice cold veins back to back. Come on, could he three repeat as well? Yes, he could. That dude's only 21. As of today, 21 years old at the moment. Dang. So, yeah, I don't know, Australia. Got a lot of good things going for you. Oh, quick shout out to Great Britain's very own Andy McDonald. Andy Mack brought his yellow helmet and represented in the Olympics. Dude is 51. I had to point that out. He completed his runs, got a score of 77.66. Andy Mack, there you go, dude. And then South Africa's Dallas, uh, is it Oberholzer? I think, yeah, Oberholzer. He showed up, you know, and competed. He's a, he's at the ripe age of 49. Not too bad. He got a 33.83 per my notes here. And that's still impressive, you know. Hey, dude, you're in the Olympics. It was DFL, but as he, he still showed up, you know, whatever. So props to those two guys. I had to point out because they're on the a little bit on the older side, whereas the on the women's side, it was the average age with 13. It's just a huge difference. So, yeah, all in all, I feel that skateboarding, you know, had another successful appearance for their second ever Olympics. It's here to stay. It's not getting the boot. You know, I think, but but real talk, though, I, 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 the street event should stay. But honestly, if they're only going limit to limit it to two events, I think that they should do vert instead of park. They just, vert's, for, for me, and I think maybe thinking of the normies or people that don't know about skateboarding, it's probably going to be more entertaining for them. It's more high-flying, unless you're Pedro Barros. But it, it, it's because park skating, I think, if you think about it, is very close to street skating. You know, but the thing is, the falls like really are hurting the park event. They're the I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the one of the men's events. It had like five bales in a row, and some of them were on the first attempt. People that that gets people to turn the channel so fast. They're like, oh, let's see what's on with swimming. That's a little bit more. It, it just these these athletes are taking it a little bit longer for our viewing entertainment. That's not fun. That's not entertaining. So, yeah, I noticed I was like five bales in a row, and then someone finally landed their run. I was like, okay. But the bales, they are hurting park skating. Plus, more selfishly, I would love to see my man Jimmy Wilkins out there competing for his uh, gold medal. Can you imagine Jimmy, like, chomping down on one of those gold medals? Just, <laughs> I can. And uh, real talk, it, it would happen. Think about this. The dude is only... At the, at the time of this podcast, he's only a seven-time X Games gold medal winner. Only. That's it. Seven. What else do you got? Seven. No no big deal. He, I mean, he'd be able to carry the entire United States on his back. Represent. The Olympics needs vert. For those in the back, the Olympics needs vert. Vert, and I know Tony Hawk's already been talking about this. So if Tony can't convince them to put Vert in, I don't know what the hell we're gonna do because it's not gonna be me. But I'm just getting it out there. Keep Street, Ditch Park, add Vert, or do all three. That's fine. Just do all three. Give us all options. Either way, though, we need to add more gold to Mr. Wilkins's collection. That's the key. Jimmy, Jimmy would be, he'd be off. The hook <laughs> he would win so many so let's make it happen universe okay let's make it happen oh and speaking of zach harris he did an amazing piece on jimmy wilkins for rolling stone you know the the boys over at the mostly skateboarding podcast talked to him great stuff 
great write up about Jimmy Wilkins. Good, and it was a cool story about it too. He got to hang with him. He got to hang with a bunch of skaters. I'm talking about Zach. That is great job, Zach. Good stuff. And of course, thank you for giving Jimmy some more shine. So much. I mean, every week we should be talking about Jimmy Wilkins. Give the dude his like his his flowers. Give him some shine. Can we get some vert in the Olympics so Jimmy can win more gold? Okay. Oh, and before I forget, too, I thought Ryan Sheckler did an amazing job as a commentator. There we go. I should probably stand. There we go. Yeah, let me stand. Good job, Ryan. Yeah. I mean, he had only a couple mistakes, some blatant ones that he kept repeating. <laughs> but he didn't call any frontside indies. So that's a win. That's what I'd be doing. But like, oh, this guy, Rick, he just said frontside indie. What the hell, man? He wasn't perfect, but I think he's a perfect fit for the Olympics. And he's only going to get better and better and better and better. Keep giving him the job until he gets sick of it. It's worth it. So great job, great job, Sheckler. So yeah, as I said, not a bad second appearance for skateboarding. I think I mentioned this for the 2020 slash 21 Tokyo Games for those who were 100% against skateboarding being in the Olympics. It wasn't as bad as we expected it. And it wasn't as crazy and huge as we expected it. It's kind of like a even keel. Boards all of a sudden aren't going to start flying off the shelf, you know, outside of the the pandemic push that kind of helped that. But you know, I mean, think about all all the millions that saw the Tom Shaw boards. Tony, very smooth dude. Turned him pro right before the Olympics. Brought him on the team. Got his board. On, dude, he got Birdhouse got some pub. Tom Shaw is fun to watch. He's like, here, you're going to turn pro, and you're going to be on the podium. Hold this board up. Thank you. But it's good exposure for the sport. Either way, I'm talking about skateboarding being in the Olympics. Even uh, Snoop Dogg was in the attendance. You know, actually, let me rephrase that. Snoop Dogg was in attendance for pretty much the whole damn Olympics. Did Snoop sleep? Snoop, did you sleep? Did he make it out to the surf events too? Was he flying back and forth? Did I see Snoop on a surfboard, or am I just tripping? I know it was that iconic surf poster, a uh, surf picture that w went around, went viral. That was awesome. Did Snoop do that too? Or like maybe on a skimboard? Or did I dream that? Never in my life. <laughs> this is crazy. Never in my life would I have thought that Snoop Dogg would be the biggest celebrity at at any Olympics event. Snoop Dogg. Mr. Murder was the case. A LBC from the LBC. No more endo gin and juice. I'm on my way to Chino. Rolling on the gray goose. Shackled from head to toe. 25 with the Izel with nowhere to gizzo. Anyway. I just had to spit that out, you know. Whatever. Deal with it. That's such a great song, though. I remember the live performance. Quick sidetrack here. They, they did for that on the MTV Music Awards when he came out in, like, a the Paul Pierce wheelchair. Kind of stood up at the end. Classic performance. Right up there with Eminem's Real Slim Shady. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding, ding. We had all those, like, like, hundreds of kids dressed just like him in those white tees with his hat. And they didn't give an F like him. It was so memorable. Anyway, yeah, Snoop Dogg was all over the place. I mean, he was hyped, hype and skateboarding. He was even in attendance, which I'm making a little segue here for breakdancing day, breakdancing's debut. Okay, wait, let me get a water, get just some water, real quick. Hold on. Okay, which I think I have. <clears throat> clear my throat multiple complaints about and it might not be for what you're thinking though well maybe one of them but I'll get to that in a minute what my biggest complaint is number one right now for the life of me I, and I can't I don't understand this I cannot see or find any of the replays Yes, I mean, I probably should have hit record on my Hulu and Peacock apps, but I didn't. I know. Stop yelling at me. 
because I assumed, well, that's part of it. When you assume some, Rick, I assumed that they would be readily available to me, to the audience, or at least on YouTube. Because, you know, it's like the Olympics and all. It's what you do. You, you can watch the replays. You can watch hours upon hours of footage. But it's like it never happened. And maybe that's by design. Mmm. Scratching my chin here. Maybe that's by design. I got lucky with the skateboarding events. All of them are available for replay. You know, of course, should I want to revisit them in the future? They'll probably be there. I watched a lot of them on replay. I did not get up at 3 a.m. And I, eh, around, sometimes, some of them I wasn't around or up around 8.30 to watch the finals. But there is absolutely zero evidence that breakdancing was even in the Olympics. Did, I mean, did it happen? Was it all a dream? Or a nightmare for some? <laughs> cough, <coughs> cough, cough. Unless your name is Ray Gunn, a.k.a. Rachel Gunn. Okay. All right. Might as well go there. Which leads me to my second complaint. But then again, it's, it's not really a complaint. Just more of an opinion. I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to come on here and just pile on here. It's been, it's, I'm not going to pile on anymore. It's been, what, a couple, a week or two. She's had enough of that. She's already come out and she's kind of spoken and said, you know, her thoughts. She's really upset about it. I'm not trying to pile on. She went viral instantly for her performance in Breaking's Olympics debut. And rightfully so. You know, odds are if you're on any social media, you have seen Ray Gunn's performance in one way or another, one form or another. A performance so, quotes, quote unquote, interesting that she didn't get a single point from the judges. <clears throat> Not one single point, three rounds. Zeros. And I agree with them too. I agree with the judges too. She earned those zeros. Those are those are she worked hard for those zeros. To have a unanimous decision across all judges says it all. Much like in boxing, sometimes it's unanimous. Fighter wins a round, fighter doesn't win a round. Fighter wins all the rounds. That's what happened here. Zeros. I don't know. It's so tough. Can you imagine being on the receiving end of those zeros? At what point do you just like, you know what? I'm in the Olympics. I'm just going to, I'm already at rock bottom right now. I'm going to try and, I'm going to confront the judges, go back out on the floor, say, you know what, guys? What? what? Zeros? Really? Really? And you have, I'm having my arms crossed right now. Like, oh, I'm going to do the kangaroo pose. Really? Really? You want some of this? Can't give me at least a 0.5? How much for a cross step? Jackhammer, yeah? Kangaroo pose? At least give me a 0.25. Come on. Some skill involved. I could do a proper flare. Just give me a couple tries. I promise. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I would do. I, I already lost. Somebody rock bottom. Wait, wait, let me do a do-over. Go file for that, for trying to do a makeup. You know, like a Carlos. I'll make up for it now. Uh-oh. I used to break dance when I was, you know, was, uh, I was in my teens, right? Back in the 80s when Break In and Beat Street were like the, the hit movies. Watched them on VHS. VHS, look it up, kids. Even Break In 2, yeah, Electric Boogaloo, but not as much. I had my, was at least a 4x4 four four cardboard in the garage with my name on it. But yeah, my name, though, it had arrows on the R, like pointing down. And on the K, pointed up of my name. Yeah, baby. That's how I did it. That's how I rolled. Even with the shadow, too. You know how to do the shadow part? I had the boom box. The, the one that took a crap ton of, like, D batteries. Those puffy laces with multiple colors. I liked, uh, I think I was rocked a lot of the black and red and the yellow and black, I think. And you know I had the Puma three-quarter uh, zip pullover. I had it all. So where am I going with this? I, I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I mean, basically what I'm saying is I just wanted to let it be known that 
what I'm about to say does come with some personal experience in breaking. I've done it. I know how difficult it is. Much like I talk about on skateboarding here. Yes, I have not skated vert, but I, I kind of get an idea of how difficult it is, if you get what I'm saying. And don't worry, I'm going to tie some skateboarding to all this as well. This will come full loop. But I will start, I guess I'll start with a question. And I could fly off the rails like very soon here too. I'm talking to myself, so stay focused, Rick. We'll just see, we'll just see. You see what you did to me, Rachel Gunn? But real talk though, do, do you think it is a good thing when a solo Olympic performer or performance causes laughter in the audience? Think of any sport, any art, any sport that key here is taken very seriously by its performers you know, it takes itself very seriously. Pride. There's a lot of pride in this. And anything where you are performing something physical for an audience. Are you following along? I'm trying to paint this one for you. And then, picture you're performing. You're doing said performance. And audience members are laughing at your performance. Even if it's just one. Or two. And it's almost something like out of an uncomfortable comedy, like a like an American Pie. Something about Mary, the bathroom scene. There's an uncomfortable comedy. Can we all agree that's not a good thing, right? To have audience members laughing at your performance, especially in the Olympics. I mean, if you're going to do the balance beam, you probably don't want people laughing at your dismount. Maybe you're swimming for gold. Audience members are cracking up, you know, creating like memes on your breaststroke. Maybe you have some weird, funky fish vibes. You know, keep in mind, I'm just talking about solo sports here. We can all laugh at Steph Curry shooting and making threes in double coverage for Team USA and giving everyone night, night. I'm doing the hand gesture. Night, night. Yeah, quick shout out Steph Curry. Damn, that was amazing. Four threes in two minutes? Are you kidding me? That was probably the highlight of the Olympics for me. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. USA, LeBron, KD. Steph, are you kidding me? Those last two minutes were insane. I was so loud and clapping. So loud. But anyway, so when back to Ray Gun. When when Ray Gun did her breakdancing routine, she uh, she damn near broke the internet. So, some may say she pretty much broke dancing. I was like, oh my hands on the chin right now. I'm I'm leaning right now. Oh, that was bad. As I said, I'm I'm assuming most of you tuning in have at least heard of it by now, seen it. If not, much respect, because I don't know how you could be offline as much as you do. I'm jealous. I'd love to be disconnected sometimes. But back to my point. There, I, I think we agree there should be zero laughing at performances in, break, in breakdancing, okay? Zero, none. That's not a good thing for both parties involved. Smiling is different. Don't get it wrong. Smiling, especially when they're battling back and forth, different. But when they're laughing, laughing. Go back and watch some clips of breaking or B Street, or any breakdancing contest, uh, contest on YouTube, it's a very serious event. Deadpans, challenges, some pushes, getting in each other's faces, maybe even some fights on occasion. So if you're like Raygun and going viral for all the wrong reasons, you have to know something was wrong with the routine. All of them. Remember, she got zeros across the board. I mean, I'll give her credit. I will give her some credit. She did have some key moves, some key moments, a sliver of traditional ones in there, a couple of Miss Lippy uh, moments, but the bad outweighed the good. It was it was bad, bad. Not like in Run DMC. Not bad isn't bad, but bad isn't good. No, this is bad, bad. Try. I'm not trying to pile on. I'm just saying. Breakdancing is a very serious thing and needs to be taken very seriously. Especially when being performed in front of millions of people and you're representing the entire country. 
And I know I have listeners in Australia. And I love y'all. I love you guys. I have my arms wide open. I love you guys. But that just wasn't it. It just wasn't it. It's the worst time to attempt to go outside the box. Worst time. At that level. On that stage. Scooting around on the floor with a hand on chin. It's not. That's a big no for me, dog. Big no. Doing a lean back like kangaroo stance. Shaking my head. That's that's not it. The spider webs, man, like flailing arms. It just isn't it. And check how composed her components are, though. That's the main thing. Watch, watch it if you can find it. I couldn't find a full one that wasn't edited or some YouTuber talking about it. Find it. Watch how composed her opponents were. They weren't phased. They were locked in. They knew what was up. They're like, oh, gosh, we're going to go viral, too. It was such a bad look, a bad sample. It's very unfortunate. I mean, it would be like Andy Anderson. How, yeah, okay. Entering a vert contest and doing a, a bunch of freestyle tricks on the flat bottom. I mean, he would be, like, basically totally ignoring the basics and the foundation and the respect of vert skating and vert ramps and vert riders and vert's history. Something like that. Or maybe, you know, let's see, I have another example. Uh, someone entering a slalom event and doing the whole thing on their knees or butts. Do you get what I'm saying? Or better yet, Daniel Gesmer, the ballerina skater from Public Domain. Imagine him entering a street contest. Judges are looking at each other like, I don't know, dude, how are we going to judge this? What, what, huh? But the thing is, though, too, skateboarding, it's never really taken itself very, you know, too seriously. So that that's what skateboarding has for it. Who hasn't seen that classic uh, contest footage of Neil Blender doing that that pogo roll on the ground, busting out with crazy tricks and spray painting? That's kind of close to what Ray Gun did. But how her skateboarding can get away with you know, like silly stuff like that, because we've never taken it that seriously. That's a there. There's the big difference right there. Time and place. How about that classic Grosso, Grosso footage, Savannah Slamma? A lot of those Savannah Slamma contests from like the 80s, 90s, no, 80s, yeah. Go back and watch all those clips from those contests. Lots of fun, silly tricks, laughing in a good way for many of the riders. Big difference. Big, big difference. Like I said earlier, go back and look up breakdancing battles. You'll be lucky to find people cracking smiles. And certainly no laughing, as in being like laughed at. There were no laughing people then. I don't even think they knew how to laugh back in the 80s. Now, Ray Gunn has talent. Let me, let me just stress this. She's got some great moves. It just did not fit into the right mold of what a breakdancing style is, is known for. And most importantly, judged upon. That's key. I know, yes, she's the number one in the country. And she's done, a, I've watched videos of her, like, before she entered. Like, everyone saw it coming. But then again, they didn't. But this was an Olympic level. But I hope that makes sense. But trust me, I've been going back and forth all week as to whether or not I was even going to talk about it. I'm like, I'm not going to pile on this woman anymore. I, I now follow her on IG. I wish her the best. I wish her the best. She's got actually. Let me. Refer, she's better a better breaker than I am at this point. I lost all my moves. Much like in skateboarding, I just try to maintain. I, I don't have any of my moves from skateboarding. I mean, from uh, break dancing, I'd end up in the ER. My Apple Watch would be like, "Are you okay? Do I need to call someone?" I just don't think yeah, this was not. An Olympic level performance. I mean, unfortunately, she wasn't a good fit for this Olympics. And if you don't agree, okay, that's fine. Okay, but let me let me change your mind. Then, can you imagine if she did all those moves back in break dancing's heyday? I'd be like, psh, oh, psh. she would have gotten destroyed then, destroyed now, destroyed then. So it, it, it sure damn well wouldn't hold up in, in previous year, generations' uh, levels. Not today either. It was just too over the top. 
And I think it was the, the main thing. I'm trying to think of what the, the main, to pinpoint one thing. I think it was the scooting around on the floor that kind of sealed her fate. That, I was like, uh, I don't know. Or maybe it was a kangaroo stance or the windmill arms. I have a headache now just think about it. I'm glad I don't have to ever talk about this again. But I can go on and on and on. It's not a good thing. Maybe someone like Shrimp Daddy. Yo, here's an idea. Shrimp Daddy can go back to like an old Beat Street battle scene. You know, trying to convince and edit that performance in. You know, for people that are trying to convince a few that actually thought she should have been scored higher than a 0000000. Let's see how that works out for you. Ray Gun against Beat Street guys, against the Breaking guys and gals. So anyway, moving on from Breakdancing's debut and final appearance. You know, grand opening, grand closing, as Jay-Z would say. I just want to know, here's my last, well, here's my, my, um, my gripe. I'm going to assume on this, and I'm kind of complain as well. Because... There is no evidence of breakdancing ever being in the Olympics. I can't find any of the YouTube videos anywhere. I can't watch any of the replays. I, I watched maybe like two or three of the battles. Can someone who actually watched it please let me know? I Please. It only takes a couple minutes to send me a message. Did the DJs bust out with any of the classic songs? Ollie and Jerry, the Barkays, Arthur Baker. Please tell me someone spun like, Breaker's Revenge. Just a nod. Just a nod to the uh, the classic songs. Like I said, I'm so bummed I didn't get, in, I didn't get to see probably 90% of it. I missed that much of it because I thought there would be a replay. And I think because it didn't do as well as they anticipated, they made it harder to find. Or like, oh, no, it all got deleted. Sorry. Why is it not on, on demand or replay? Why? Actually, don't miss it. Don't 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 answer that. We we all know it, why it missed, why it's not gonna be replayed. We know. So yeah, all I gotta say is well yeah. One last thing: if the if the DJs didn't even spin Nucleus's jam on it at least once, that's an epic fail. Yeah yeah, I'm saying that. It's not even on Ray Gun. Put that performance aside. If they didn't play any of those songs that I mentioned, that's an epic fail. Come on, guys. Really? Really? And I'm reacting right now as if they didn't because I know no one's going to message me and go, Rick, they did, man. They played this and this and this. Got to pay respect to the to the OGs. Dun, 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 dun. I was listening to that the other day in the car. My you know, kids were like, what is this song? But don't worry, kids. All of a sudden, your, your, your feet are going to start tapping in the back. You want to like do a kangaroo pose. So yeah, someone let me know. What did they play? Because the songs I heard, <laughs> nah, nah. That, those didn't get me hyped to, to break dance. They were long, repetitive. And I know that's kind of what you needed for like a contest. Maybe I didn't understand because I haven't seen them. Maybe I didn't understand the songs. They said, oh, we're going to play this same song for like eight minutes. And it's just going to be just kind of a little variation. And you just, I'm like, no, play the hits. Pay homage to... The classic songs. Get get the people in the crowd and at home hyped. Get them, to, you know, I'm looking around for cardboard now. If I would add cardboard and heard those songs, hell yeah, it's on. Hey, babe, can you pick me up? I tried to do a backspin. Uh, anyway, so yeah, let me know. Did I miss out on that? I don't think I did, to be honest. So I don't need to get too worked up because I'm assuming I didn't. But what about you? Did you did you check it out? What was your favorite part of the Olympics? Or you're just happy it's over and you're like, Rick, can you can you move on? Can you please stop talking about the Olympics now? Do you care or not care? I don't know. Are you like Hook and Christian Asoy of the Daggers saying, breaking some memory for wimps? I sure hope not. I sure hope they're not right. 